If you are looking for signs for your team or business, look no further than High Tech Signs and Apparel, a state-of-the-art, full-service sign shop. And from the clean and modern off-light shop to the latest technology in designing and producing signs, High Tech Signs has a sales staff of over 25 years' experience to cater your every need. Services include large format digital printing, interior signage, exterior signage, vehicle solutions, and apparel. When it comes to solving the sign problems, the solution is High Tech Signs and Apparel. Located at 3359 Middle Road, Suite 2 in Bettendorf, you can call them with any of your questions at 563-449-9400. High Tech Signs and Apparel, proud sponsors of Muscatine River Hawks football. Haller's Bar and Grill, food to drool over and entertainment to make you dance. This is what you would imagine in a Quad Cities bar, and Haller's Bar and Grill is just the place to have it. Serving happy hour every day from 3 to 5 p.m. with daily drink and food specials. They also deliver. Contact them at 309-277-9028. Haller's Bar and Grill, proud sponsors of Muscatine Riverhawks football. The following broadcast is a production of the Riverhawks Media Network and is property of the Muscatine Riverhawks. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast without the expressed written consent of Muscatine Riverhawks football is strictly prohibited. And welcome to the River Hawks Media Network, episode two here on uh, River Hawks Weekly. I am your play-by-play -play announcer, Tyler Bean, along with my partner in crime and former Monmouth College wide receiver, Jacob Landry. Jacob, it's another week, another week closer to kickoff. How are we doing? Excited, you know, counting down the days, counting down the weeks. I'm just ready to get there and ready to kick off. Well, I I can tell you I'm right there with you. It seems like every episode we do, and we've only done one so far, we're just inching closer to that kickoff, a new inaugural season, new inaugural network, and we're looking forward to bringing you all the games here on the 2021 slate. Now, with that being said, as training camp is ramping up and Eric Johnson and company are looking to drive closer towards an MAFL championship, be a good time to talk about the schedule again as we did to conclude last week's podcast. Again, April 11th at Burlington, April 18th at home against the Midwest Hawks, April 25th at home against Peoria, April 16th, Quad Cities and Muscatine reunite in a rivalry, April 23rd, Keokuk Timberwolves, April 30th, at Springfield and the Central State Savages. Again, SCO folded, so that game against SCO becomes another bye week for the Riverhawks. And then on the road to finish it off before hopefully what is a championship run at MST. I know I talked about in our last podcast, April 25th and May 16th really stand out to me. Are there any games on the schedule that really got you chomping at the bit? Well, I mean, like you said, that game against Peoria, Peoria Punisher, excuse me, uh, the players are for sure looking at that one on their schedule, licking their chops. They are ready to get back in there because that's who knocked them out last year in the playoffs. So they're wanting to get back on the field and show them that, hey, we're back on top. This is our league. However, the one I'm looking forward to personally, I'm excited for, is obviously week one kickoff with the Burlington Express. Uh, I just, you know, like I said, I'm excited for the season to start. It's going to be a good time. Well, I tell you what, and I don't have to mention it, all of our games are going to be streamed live on the Riverhawks Media Network with myself and Jake side by side. And, uh, you know, I, I have to stress the Peoria game is going to be huge for me. I'm sure it's huge on the schedule. And we've got two guys tonight that are probably chomping at the bit that we'll talk to shortly. The other one that I want to mention also is that April 16th game at home against the Quad City Nighthawks. The Quad City Nighthawks were an 11-man team. They moved over to 8-man, and they come into a very, very competitive league. Lots of firepower. I'll be excited to see what they bring up. So let's head into our, our next portion, uh, at Jacob. And heading into 2021, we talked to Coach Barnhart and Coach O'Toole last week. 
regarding offense and special teams. One thing we didn't touch on was defense, and I know that you brought up defense uh, in our last show. And I just think, you know, before we talk to the, the quarterbacks here that are going to be looking to air raid against these tough defenses in the MAFL, what is it about this schedule with three home games uh, in the first four weeks and three bye weeks? What do you think that's going to do to the Riverhawks defense? Well, the big thing there is the three bye weeks. Uh, for starters, you got two bye weeks back to back. At about the middle of the season, the big thing for that is going to be the entire team needs to come back focused. I think I touched on that last week. And then that bye week late in the season, that's going to be great, especially for the defense, because defense has been flying around all season at this point. Their bodies are tired, their bodies are sore. Uh, I certainly remember in my defense days back in high school, Lord knows that was a long time ago. Uh, that, I, that my big thing was I was just always tired. So that that bye week right before playoffs is going to be crucial. Uh, however, what I am excited to see uh, this year, obviously, is the defensive line, that front line. Uh, based off of last year, not many sacks on the board, but the quarterback pressures were huge. Uh, alone, Raquan Jefferson is back on that defensive line, and he had 22 quarterback pressures along with his seven QB hits and two and a half sacks. Uh, and then out there on the line, we are in the linebacker core. We had three and a half sacks from Sean Bell, like I touched on last week, in four quarterback hits. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see that pressure, but also in the secondary, I'm excited to see that turnover game because last year there was an, also a very a strong turnover game uh, for this defense with 14 interceptions, eight forced fumbles, uh, and five recovered with 18 sacks. Uh, so I'm very excited to see if we can see some points on the board from the defense as well to help out that young offense, uh, who I have full confidence in, of course. But that defense, with if they uh, win in that turnover battle, is going to be a great season for the Riverhawks. Well, I tell you what, championship teams find a way to complement one another, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. The big thing on the schedule that I'm looking at in the final four weeks – all three road games, that's going to be huge. That bye week is going to be very, very big for them to rest and recover. And, uh, you know, also to note with, with championship teams complementing each other very well, uh, you know, the big thing from the offense, we talked about that with Martin Barnhart last week, is that they feel like they're getting a gel. They feel like they're getting continuity with, with, a, with a, a great quarterback battle that's going on here in camp. We'll touch on that. I think we'll wrap this up and head to a quick break. Stick around with us. We got Zach Taylor and Kyle Franklin coming here on the Riverhawks Media Network. If you're in the Davenport area, check out the Dam View. Welcome to your favorite dive bar tucked away downtown. They host a wide range of beers, many of which are local, as well as daily specials, good service, and a large patio. Contact them at 563-324-4434. Proud supporters of the Muscatine River Hawk. Have some critters bugging you and your home team or business? Call The Bugman, the top quality pest control service in Muscatine. Services include tackling ants, bed bugs, bees, cockroaches, fleas or mites, hornets, wasps, home inspections, and so much more. Give them a call at 563 554 2847. The Bugman. Proud sponsor of the Muscatine River Hawks. Looking to level up your game this offseason or take care of your body midseason for that late season playoff push? Then Badlands Fitness is the place for you. Badlands Fitness is the Quad City's choice for elite athletic training for athletes of all ages, all sports, and levels. Contact them at 309 617 6416. Badlands Fitness, proud sponsors of Muscatine River Hawks football. Nutrition Outlet. If you are looking to maintain your health or get back in shape, Nutrition Outlet provides a wide variety of products and services, including biometric scanning, organic salon, detox sessions, emotional balancing, and natural health assessments. Contact them at 563-264-8124. Nutrition Outlet. Proud sponsors of Muscatine Riverhawks football. And we are back here on Riverhawks Weekly, joined by two Riverhawks quarterbacks. Zach Taylor, Kyle Franklin, thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for the invite. Absolutely, and I guess I'll just dive uh, you know, right into it. Obviously, we've talked about it in our previous show. Tyler Newsom, no longer the quarterback under center. I'll start with you. What is not only the challenges that you face filling that role, what opportunities do you see filling that role? Um, well, challenges, I guess. Uh, Tyler was a pretty well quarterback, so uh, sure. that's a uh, – role that you have to fill as a quarterback you have to be a leader 
Um, that's a main, you know, course of your team right there. So uh, filling that shoes are going to be, you know, a big step for us. But I think we, uh, me and Zach here can do that uh, for sure on that. Um, hopefully we can just take this team as far as we can, honestly, and put that uh, title news in the back of uh, our heads because this is our season now and we have to look forward to do what we have to do to go get a championship. Absolutely, and I know that Coach Johnson and Coach Barnhart, who was on with us last week, had nothing but great things to say, and I know that you guys are going to fill those roles just fine, and we're excited to see what you guys can do. Yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that, how do you feel about this quarterback competition going on right now and replacing those uh, that big-name player? Um, I mean, he does his big shoes to fill, but at the same time, um, I have confidence in both of us to get the job done. Um, we play we played together on the Nighthawks, uh, and we did uh, very great together. Like we were um, in sync, we did everything uh, crisp. So I believe the season is going to be great. Well, that's good to hear because the competition between two familiar opponents. I mean that that must drive both of y'all to really compete every single practice, every single play. Uh, so that's exciting to hear as you know a fan and you know a spectator just to see what's going to happen next. Absolutely. And, you know, my next question for you, Kyle, is going to be, obviously, we talked to the coaches last week. We're kind of ramping up as the season is close approaching. And we, you know, we talked to them a lot off camera about what's going on in this off season, how you guys are practicing your regimens as a team. What's your kind of workout regimen like by yourself? Because I know for a quarterback, very important to have that alone time to kind of get in your own head and to work on your own mechanics as a player. Just give us a little insight on that. Um, well, uh, for working out is uh, basically I'll just hit the gym as much as I can working a full-time job. It's kind of uh, difficult for that. But I carry a football around a lot, and I play catch as much as I can. I mean, the girlfriend, she'll play catch with me. My buddy will play catch. Sure. Um, it's For me, it's more um, um, muscle memory is what I have to get down. So, like, I like to play catch, just do drills, do a lot of drills. A lot of footwork. Um, working on my speed is the main thing I need to work on too. So it's a lot of a lot of footwork and a lot of just throwing the ball around right now. Yeah, big time. I mean, a lot of you know, I've never been a quarterback. Obviously, I've always been a hog on the offensive or defensive line. But I know for quarterbacks, having that alone time to get your muscle memory and timing down. I mean, I know a guy like Drew Brees who just retired a short time ago. Guys would always see him on the field, just calling snaps, calling plays, doing his own little drills to help pay off on game day. And I guess to piggyback off of that a little bit, what's what's studying and reading the playbook like for you in your own time? Do you spend more time on your own calling cadences, calling plays as as kind of a, you know, getting ready for a presentation for a class or or, or what's that like? Um, honestly, I'm more quiet. I'm more just uh, like A to B. I just read my playbook, know my, know my um, formations, and know actually what each receiver is doing in case I had to play that position. Um, and just, yeah, I just have to, I like to make sure I know what every person is doing. My cadence, I guess that'll come with time, but uh, sure. it's more of a study, study yeah. like I'm back in school. Uh, the more you study, the more it's going to pay off down the road, hopefully in late June, early July, when you're making a championship push. And kind of going off of the, you're the more quieter quarterback, what kind of quarterback would you describe yourself as, as a player and as kind of that field general? How would you describe how you approach? Um, <clears throat> so as far as um, practice-wise, um, I feel like I'm very, like, laid back. Um, I don't want to say go through the motions, but I'm, like, I sit back and watch everybody else uh, and try to see how, like, little stuff that I can go um, help them on, uh, not as a coach, but, like, at, like from a, a peer standpoint. Because um, I feel like that's good for everybody to see, or for everybody to learn from um, your player, or from your teammates, as well as uh, coaches. So basically, on the field, I'm more. Um, I feel like I'm more aggressive in a way. Um, I, I get I get pumped up easily. <laughs> uh, um, I, I kind of let's see. I'm more vocal, I guess. Um, I, I uh, ask for suggestions or what I should like did better. Um, I try to get my O line and everything going before the game. So. Um, during the game, everybody's uh, everybody's all up and ready to go, basically. So off, you know, you talking about your teammates and yeah. your offense. Uh, how are you coming along with your chemistry with your receivers and your running backs? Uh, it's kind. Of, I'm not gonna lie. It's been kind of a struggle at first because um, how quick I came into the offense or like um, how late I started, I should say. 
Um, but as we went along, it's been is everything has progressed very well. We've been doing pretty good at practice. Everything has been flowing. That's good. Uh, like I said last week, chemistry is a very big part of the game, as most people know. So uh, we're looking forward to see what y'all do out there on the field. Yeah, yeah and I'm gonna I'm gonna twist this up a little bit for our viewers uh, watching from home. This is kind of gonna be for both of you guys. So feel free to answer one at a time, starting with you. You're a lefty. Yeah. You're a righty, right? And what's it like? the transition for your receivers to have to work off of the ball spin of a right-handed quarterback and a left-handed quarterback. Is there, you know, is there sometimes a little bit of a mix up there? I know that the receiving core is loaded this year with talent. So I just wanted to kind of get an insight on, on what that's like for you guys at practice. Um, I think like what you just said at the end, um, our receiving core is very talented. So I don't think it really affects them as much as people think. I mean, Zach, those a tight ball. It doesn't have really that, tail that that lefty has or that sideways spin so sure. it almost comes off almost the same i think um this year our wide receivers will definitely be perfectly fine to adjust to righty or lefty quarterback sure what about you zach um i don't feel like there's much of an uh, issue in that aspect everybody um everybody seems to be able to catch both, like both our balls so yeah, yeah well chemistry is going to be a big thing we talked about it in the first segment and maybe this will be another two-parter question. I hate to throw my partner down there into a into a tailspin. We didn't talk about this off camera, but we talked about the schedule this year and the the challenges and opportunities that's going to face for you guys as a team and for us here on the Riverhawks Media Network. Again, those are going to be uh, all streamed live and, and direct from the location that we're at. Any games this year that you guys are really chopping at the bit to play, or is this more of a you know let's play it one game at a time mentality? <laughs> I threw them for a whirlwind, folks. I don't think they were ready for I that. I think both of our answers will be the same. I, I think so, too, but I just wanted to hear your guys' I'll let, I'll story. I'll let Zach answer that. For the QC Nighthawks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, and there's a reason why I said I was looking forward to that game. It's going to be a good one, and, and obviously you guys, I would assume that that's your answer as well. What's that going to be like, playing against a former team? I mean, you look about it in, like, the, the pro ranks, right? I mean, Tom Brady in Tampa Bay playing against New England, that that would be, you know, a surefire game to watch. I mean, does that just give you a little extra drive to, to prepare a little bit better and to work a little harder for that game, knowing that uh, a team that you, that you used to call homes on the other side? Um, I just think the adrenaline is just going to be two times more kicking, and that is going to um, light a fire, and I think that will actually put us a step. I think we're going to do what we know we're going to come out. Do, so. Absolutely, and you know, I know my adrenaline's going to be through the roof on that game and the Peoria game. So I can only imagine what what it's going to be like on the sidelines. And again, we'll see that all live and direct. And I guess my last question for you, Kyle, is uh, obviously your first year with the organization. Have you set yourself some benchmark goals uh, personally uh, for s stats or, or wins or, or things like that? Or you know, are you looking to be in the in the tent after a couple of games, being the Riverhawks player of the game? Or I mean, I just want to get your insight on on what your season goals are like this year. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really set my own season goals. It's more of a team goals. Um, I just go game by day, game by game, because you never know the outcome of the next day. I mean, I can get injured one day and not be able to play. So that's why I take it just like life, day by day. It's game by day. Um, and we just go one game at a time, and then hopefully that leads us to a championship. Sure. And, uh, hey, keep that in the back. One goal you got to have is to get in, in us with a, in the tent for an interview after a game because we'll look forward to talking to you after a big win. Maybe the Quad City game. Circle down your guys' schedules and work to work to get in the tent. So Awesome. Thank you. I mean, on this side, we got another guy we could possibly see in the uh, player of the game tent. So 110%, Zach, man. Uh, we got a lot of talent at this table right here. So, Zach, I'm going to ask you – um, kind of a question for both of y'all, I guess. How is the rest of the team fed off of this QB competition going on? Because obviously this is your big one, one of the big positions on the field. How has the rest of the team responded to this competition here? Um, I feel like honestly they've responded like uh, positively. Um, they don't. I mean, I don't feel like they really care who who's starting or whatnot because um, we both can get it done. Um, there's nothing to worry about with us playing quarterback. All right, Kyle, how do you feel about that, too? Um, same thing. I think um, as a team now, we've had our practices where we're starting to flow, and I think they are set in stone for which whoever has to take um, the field first that 
no matter what we know, we have each other's back. So that's good. Either or. That's cha- championship culture is the big deal, and of course, believing in that man under center is usually the start of a, a championship culture, right there. So that's good to hear. That's exciting to hear as any River Hawk fan, as a football fan. We can't wait to see what y'all have to do out there, man. Well, you, you said it perfectly. I can't wait either. I mean, the absolute. Um, the absolute statute that these guys hold coming here, giving us a little insight, greatly appreciated. Um, you guys are fantastic. Eric has nothing but good uh, things to say about you. We're looking forward to calling games, calling some wins, and hopefully calling a, a championship game here in July. So, again, thank you guys so much for taking the time to be with us. Greatly appreciated. We're going to take a quick break, come back to wrap things up here on the River Hawks Media Network. The Quad City Insulators, with over a decade in home comfort, The Quad City Insulators exist to serve the needs of their homeowners, architects, farmers, and business owners. The amount of money that is wasted due to heating and cooling loss has created a strong demand for not only their superior products, but superior worksmanship. They can be contacted at 309-373-0505 and are proud sponsors of the Muscatine River Hawks. All-American Diner, the leading restaurant serving Muscatine, Muscatine County, and surrounding areas since 2020 serving breakfast all day as well as lunch and dinner. They offer a fish fry every Friday and a buffet on the weekends. For your next meal, visit All-American Diner in Muscatine or call for more information at 563-263-2224. All-American Diner, proud sponsors of Muscatine River Hawks. And we are back here on the River Hawks Media Network. Man, Jake, I tell you, what a great segment that was with Zach Taylor and Kyle Franklin, who are battling for the top spot as QB1 of the Muscatine River Hawks. I was absolutely uh, in shock and awe in a good way on the rapport that these two quarterbacks bring. Has to be really exciting for uh, offensive coordinator Martin Barnhart and head coach Eric Johnson to have those weapons at his disposal. Absolutely. Coach Barnhart is going to have a very, very tough time trying to figure out who he wants under center. And that's kind of almost a good problem to have at this time, uh, especially early in the season. The good thing is if one quarterback does not work out, it'll be pretty simple for him to throw that other guy in there. Next man up, as most people say. Uh, It sounds like the team is very trusting of these QBs, and it's going to be something very exciting to witness uh, this season. Well, and I think something big that I wanted to touch on while we had them here is the confidence that not only they showed themselves, but they showed in each other. Both coming from the Quad City Nighthawks last year, River Hawks this year, they both talked about how they were chomping at the bit for that May 16th battle, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do on the field. Yeah, it's it's always a different experience when you play a former team. you got friends over there, you know, some people you grew close to. You had that chemistry that you're trying to build with this one team that you once had with that other team, and now you're showing uh, this new the new team you're with. It's it's just there's something special about doing that. Uh, it adds a little intensity to the game on both sides of the ball. So that is definitely one we're going to mark on our calendars. Well, hey, and Jake, I tell you what, last week, a little bit of a uh, season in review. This week, a little bit of a training camp preview. We've already done it a few times, but let's bring up that schedule one more time to just quickly review the games that will all be streamed live here on the Riverhawks Media Network, starting in Burlington, April 11th, April 18th, Midwest Hawks, 25th, Peoria Punishers, May 16th, that Quad City Nighthawks game that both Zach and Kyle were looking forward to playing, Uh, in Iowa, Keokuk on the 23rd of May, they're down in Springfield on the 30th, a brand new fresh buy, no SCO game as the team folded. And then May 13th as they're wrapping up what's hopefully the beginning of a long championship run there in Bloomington, the home of MST. And, and I guess I, I, I want to stress one more time, you know, this schedule, uh, you know, home games early on, road games late. That's got to be quite a daunting task. We'll see if this team's up for it. Well, I think they're absolutely up for it. I mean, based off what we heard from the coaches last week and the quarterbacks this week, the team is fully confident in each other. And we're a part of – we've heard of what they've been talking to each other on on their uh, private messages, the Facebook page. They want to build a championship culture. They want to make another championship run. They have the pieces together. Uh, They're going to feed off of each other's energy, offense and defense, special teams. Everybody is bought into this program. It's going to be a sight to see this season, and I just cannot wait. Well, partner, I can't wait either, and I'm sure you can't. So if if you haven't already, please follow us on the Riverhawks Media Network here on our platforms on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, we hope to see you on the next show. 
So for my partner and former Mammoth College wide receiver, Jacob Landry, I'm play-by-play -play announcer Tyler Bean. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next episode of Riverhawks Wheatley right here on the Riverhawks Media Network. To keep up with everything Muscatine Riverhawks, follow us on all social media platforms to see everything behind the scenes, weekly podcasts, and of course, our live streams of games every Sunday. You can follow us on Facebook at Muscatine Riverhawks Media Network, on Instagram at Muscatine Riverhawks, Twitter at Riverhawks underscore capital MN. You can follow us on YouTube at Muscatine Riverhawks Media Network, and then you can follow us on Snapchat at Riverhawks 2017. If you're in the mood for some new ink, look no further than Pearl City Tattoo. Bill Kaufman opened Pearl City Tattoo in 2005 and has grown to be the most recommended tattoo shop in Muscatine, believing that every customer deserves the best experience possible, and they set the standard for communication, prompt scheduling, and transparent pricing. You have questions, you can reach out to Bill on Facebook and Instagram or contact them at 563-263-7001. Proud sponsors of Muscatine Riverhawks football. If you are looking for a place for fellowship and worship with great people, look no further than New Hope Church, welcoming those from all walks of life and faith with two Sunday services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in Moline and 10 a.m. in Milan. More information can be provided by calling 309-764-5685 or 309-558-0065. New Hope Church, proud sponsors of the Muscatine River Hawks. We're back here on the Riverhawks Media Let's Network. Go. Diallo gets the ball, heads left, heads to the right. He breaks a couple of tackles, and he could go. He's to the 20, to the 10. Could go all the way for a Boonies Riverhawks touchdown. And I'm hungry. And what's this, folks? A change of events as Diallo's off the field. Looks like he's on Iowa Avenue in Muscatine. I think he said something about being hungry. He crosses the street. He jumps the curb. Oh, look no further. He's at Boonies on the Avenue. Let's head inside. What's a piece of that is an MVP play, and you could be the MVP of your team at home by heading to Boonies on the Avenue in Muscatine, a family restaurant with over 27 big screen TVs, daily food and drink specials to cater the needs of any sports fan, from a rookie to a Hall of Famer. Looking for a night out or a place to watch the big game? Look no further than Boonies on the Avenue, located at 214 Iowa Avenue in Muscatine, or by phone at 563-263-0626. Boonies on the Avenue, proud sponsors of Muscatine Riverhawks football. This is the portion of our broadcast where you can see your ad in our next upcoming podcast or live stream game. The Muscatine Riverhawks provide a wide variety of sponsorship packages to cater the needs of your business. More information on these packages can be provided to you from Kyle Bass or Eric Johnson, and their contact information is 563-299-8334 or 309-721-5560. We look forward to your support this season, and as always, go Riverhawks! Hi folks, all of us here at the Riverhawks Media Network are excited to bring you non-stop football action the entire 2021 season. But we are also happy to bring you an opportunity to get you involved. Here at the Muscatine Riverhawks Media Network and the Muscatine Riverhawks football team are working with the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois. Every time the defense gets a sack, a touchdown, or a turnover, on defense, a charitable donation will be made in honor of the football team. We want you as the fans to also be involved with us, and we will be setting up a GoFundMe later on for this once the season starts that you will be able to donate to for the entirety of the season. While you're supporting this team, come and support our team. The GoFundMe will be live come kickoff on April 11th. We thank you fans for donating to this organization and thank you for supporting the Muscatine Riverhawks for the last five years.